Hi everybody, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I'm Jim Kerr. And welcome to 15 Minutes of Fame. Well, Jim, Jeff, we're gonna step. Did you did you get a haircut? I I did get a haircut. Thank you for Looking noticing. Good, it's buddy. not styled. Looking good. It's not styled, but I got the haircut. Uh, did you did did you get a haircut? I don't know. I think it's just the lighting. I was thinking that as soon as I brought up the video, I was it's like, oh, something about me looks different. I, I do, however, remember getting a head massage and passing out. You're right. <laughs> and waking up like in my jacket on a couch <laughs> in the lobby of a haircutting place. Right. So you don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not really. I don't know. Something may have happened. Something looks different about me, though. I'll give you that. And, and you're right. Like, like everything in this world, the better lighting completely changes your mind over what's it, happening. It could be the lack of spandex <laughs> and cycling helmets. Cycling helmet. Yeah, I went it, it, through a weird phase <laughs> last week. I don't know. I, I'd like to apologize <laughs> to everyone who's having trouble getting that image out of their head, right. albeit not a, a bad image. A, yeah, a fantastic image. That's right. That's right. But hey, <laughs> well, let's get on to some sports and talk some football this week. Uh, and some big news with the Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah, first up, they made the playoffs. Woo! How about that? Despite losing another close one against who else but Calgary. That's right. Uh, that news broke on the weekend that Eric Tillman's being let go wow. as the GM of the team. President Len Rhodes said there wasn't any one specific reason for the decision, but a lot of the talk afterwards is... You know, Tillman it didn't live here, so yeah. he wasn't all here. That's kind of weird. That's a big one. I, I didn't, I didn't even know that, but yeah. I heard he didn't travel with the team when they were gone. And so, was he part time? It <laughs> kind of, sort of, what it sounds like. And uh, it, it didn't sound like he had a lot of trust uh, from others in the organization, especially as the season went on. So, it's kind of an awkward time to to uh, to make the move. But I think another thing Len Rhodes said was that at this point in the season. When the regular season's over and the playoffs are beginning, the GM's kind of looking to the next season as opposed to doing other GM duties that you'd have during the regular season. So, you know, I guess this is as good a time as any. And plus, I think we've talked about this. What if the Eskimos win the Grey Cup? How do you fire the guy after that? That's right. That's so right. you get rid of him now, figure it out in the off season. They said they want to have someone in place by the end of the calendar year. So we'll see what happens there. But... Uh, Pretty shocking move. I, I, I mean, I, I thought that it was going to happen eventually. I didn't expect it when I, when I read the news. Timing was absolutely incredible. I, that was really weird to me that they would do that um, eight days out from their first playoff game. Um, against? Uh, <laughs> uh, against the Toronto Argonauts and Ricky Ray, <laughs> who, who was the big trade. Uh, that, uh, but I, I mean, uh, Len Rhodes did make it real specific um, when he was doing his interview, saying it wasn't the Ricky Ray trade; it was a number of things, not just that trade. Because as Rhodes said, he signed off on the trade, and then so yeah. he, you know, that that might just be him covering, sure. But um, something else, though, um, uh, Tillman living uh, outside, living in Regina, is that is that where it was the yeah. whole time? Yeah, that's weird to me. That's weird to me too. You know, because cause how, how often was he here? Like, I heard they hardly ever saw him around the office. Yeah. Well. That's so weird. You and I could GM teams. Yeah, you know, I'm going to try that with my work. That's right. I'm just going to, uh, no, no. no, I don't live on 75th Street, so I'm just going to just gonna enter home. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be there on Monday. Yeah. I swear I'm working. For I Wednesday. Swear. Yeah. Yeah, I'll... You know, I'll send you an email if I can make it for Friday. Right, right. See that that, that I can see that being kind of like a, you know, even so. Okay, say it's say it's non-football decisions were the reason here. Yeah. Not alone, you'd be like, hey man, like, like, why aren't you yeah, at what's up? work? Like, why you? I didn't see you at the uh, team. What you know? So that I, I would say that's you, you can't. No, I, mean, I agree. I, I guess I guess you can GM like that in this day and age where you can. Yeah, oh yeah. I remember hearing about Conrad Black signing autographs of his book from a different state. <laughs> yeah. Different you know, you could sign deals and you could do it. You could pretty much be there without being there. But is that so, ideal? No, no, it's certainly not. Not at all. Exactly. Well, okay. What about the playoffs? You you said something interesting in the last piece about how, um, you know, if the Eskimos win the Grey Cup, then how do you fire Tillman at that point? Um, starting with the Ricky Ray Argonauts, um, are you thinking that the Eskimos even have a remote shot at the Grey Cup, Jim? Well, it, it depends. I mean, well, the the hard uh, the hard part in most leagues is is making the playoffs, right? Yes. The, the CFL. Well, more teams make the playoffs than not, but 
Uh, once you're in the playoffs, you know, it's three games. Anything can happen, yeah, really. That's right. uh, with the Eskimos this year, it's hard to know what to expect on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, the defense has been good all year. We, we can expect that the added pressure or experience of playoff football can, you know, will, will very likely have them playing even better. I would hope a guy like J.C. Sherritt, especially, yeah. you know, like I, I think they're rolling along pretty nicely on the D side. But when it comes down to the effectiveness of the quarterback, you know, first of all, who's playing? Yeah. <laughs> if if they make a change, okay, what's this other guy going to bring to the table? It, it It's hard to know what you're going to get from the Eskimos on offense. If they can get the ball in the hands of guys like Fred Stamps, there Kerry Coke, some of their other receivers that have had big games in yeah. the last few weeks, there's something there. But yes. unless, like, if this is going to be one of those games where we're going quarters without a first down, I don't expect them to win. Absolutely. But you know, you got to watch because Ricky Ray's, Ricky Ray's been playing real good since yeah. coming back from injury. Uh, eight touchdown passes in his last two games or something like that. So it, it, it's going to be a good game if the Eskimos can can hold them off on D and just get a bit of momentum on offense. I think you know I think we'll see something. And they they played well against Calgary. It was another close one. They've lost pretty much every game they've lost to Calgary has been a close one. And should we end up playing them again at some point before the season's out? You got to figure Edmonton's due. Yeah, they got to get one. We're losing in the last second That's every right. time. That's you got to right. figure we're due for one. Oh my god. And. Though that will be fine if R1 is the big one. <laughs> That's and right. it would be if we play Calgary again. So, please. There you go. Please, football gods. Please, football If you're not gods. too busy with the NFL, <laughs> yes. can you please <laughs> Just take a up? look. Yeah. Well, let's move on to some hockey, Jim. There have been some labor talks between the NHL and the NHLPA. What's the latest there? The two sides met at an undisclosed location yeah, on Saturday afternoon until late in the day. Uh, my guess is a BP's lounge somewhere. Yeah, obviously. Uh, they say they're working to find common ground and that some progress is being made, but no one's. There's optimism, but everyone's still a bit guarded. Understandably so. Um, they plan to meet again this week. Still, uh, no Winter Classic. We no heard Winter this Classic. week. No hockey until at least December or something. Uh, interesting though that they just pushed the Winter Classic back a year. Yeah. So it's same place, same teams, but a year later. If there's hockey by then. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit. We always said that if the Winter Classic was canceled, that that would probably mean the season. Um, I still think that's that's relatively true. Unless these talks that are happening, that happened late into the night Saturday um, of this weekend, tr turn fruitful, then I still think that might be the end of that being the end of hockey for this year. We'll see. Yeah, it's definitely close. I mean, they've... They they can't hold out much longer no. to get an actual legitimate season in. Yeah. We haven't talked much about this. Uh, I know I've been keeping an eye on it nonstop. Uh, the, the Oilers are doing a really good job of tweeting a lot of this. But how about the Oklahoma City Barons, especially right now, since Taylor Hall got sent down and uh, and has been playing? R&H, Aberly, the Hall, and, and Justin Schultz has just been eating up the whole league. Yeah, they're crushing it down there, yeah. especially Schultz. Leads the AHL in scoring. Hall uh, uh, finally cleared to play. Uh, scored seconds into his debut seconds. on Friday. Also got a match penalty. Yeah, he did. What appeared it to be got a reversed. Later rescinded. Yeah. Uh, Eberle and the Nuge also uh, steadily putting up points through. That's got to be a fun team to watch right now. I just wish the AHL took more of a, hey, this is our time to showcase our product. Let's do even standard definition. Yeah. Rock. Oh, my Some God. Some of the highlight packages you see, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. But uh, I wish the AHL would be a little more, you know, out there right now. Because no. it is, it is kind of hard to track these games down. I can't believe I can get the Oil Kings in high definition on regular cable uh, and can't get uh, – can't get uh, yeah, and, and, and this is the year, like you mentioned, this is the year to do it. Why not? Yeah. So some of the highlights look like abstract art, oh, but like with brutal. my glasses off. Oh, right? it's brutal. <laughs> Absolutely. You score or die? I can't – it's just, come on, man. Absolutely. It'd be nice for them to win some games, though. That's the only thing we're not seeing right now. We're seeing that yeah. first line score and Justin Schultz doing his thing, but sure, it'd be nice to see them win a couple of games. It would be. Yeah. It'll come. It'll come. We talk MMA from time to time on the show. Uh, we really enjoy it. Two things, though, this week. What do you think of the possible women's division in the UFC? And then we'll talk a little bit about the latest failed drug test. Yeah, you know, the women's division's interesting because 
I think most people's initial thoughts from the little bits of women's MMA personally that I've seen doesn't look that good. But I, I think the UFC's waited and waited until it got to a certain point where there are there are a handful of elite fighters, Ronda Rousey, yeah. just arm barring people I'm like there's insane. no tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they've waited until there's a, a good crop of fighters that it's not gonna be seen as I don't wanna say a farce, but like compared to the U compared to the male division, it's it's not gonna be where anywhere near where the male division is. But I think they've waited long enough that it's that it's competitive and that it's that there's some marketable fighters because of course that's what that's the game right there. Yes. Um, so that'll be interesting, and it's it's nice to see that the UFC is you know, uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure there's a lot of women MMA fighters out there, and they're probably happy to see that you know it's it's going in that direction. As for the drug yeah. test, Stefan Bonner got smoked at UFC 153 by yeah, Anderson right. Silva. We all yeah. remember that beautiful just chin to the right here area. Woo! Uh, turns out he tested positive for an anabolic steroid. Huh. Uh, reports say it was it was one that was more for cutting weight than it is for strength, but still, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, uh, interesting. Four of the last ten guys, according to uh, MMAfighting.com, I believe is the the website. Four of the last ten guys who have fought Anderson Silva have tested positive for something after fighting him. That just goes to show you how. And they all lost. Yeah. Silva's the man right now. Yeah, like, dude. it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that must be, you know, that must feel pretty good. Uh, well, uh, basically, half the people you fought over the last several years we're, we're figured juiced. they needed steroids yeah. or something else to beat you. Absolutely and they didn't amazing. beat you because oh, you're the man. Well, let's move on to the Gabbies now. These are the good and bad by you. We take the best and the worst in the world of sport, and we usually make fun of it, but we're not going to make fun of this first one, Jim. Nope. We're going to give a good to Justin Schultz, who we were just talking about. He was named the AHL's Player of the Month for October with six goals and 12 points in seven games to lead the league. Um, he's a rookie in the AHL. When he comes to the NHL, he's going to be a rookie there. He's got back-to-back -back rookie seasons. We'll see, depending on if the, uh -huh. how the lockout goes. That's me just talking. Nice. talking yeah. nice. see, see how I dug in there? Anyways, there was lots of hype when the Oilers managed to sign this guy, and it looks like he's he's really ready to, to take the challenge. He does doesn't really have the defensive side of the game, but neither did Paul Coffey when he started, and uh, and that turned out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, and and he's still putting up points since oh, yeah. since October. He's he's got a few more, so the guy is just crushing it. Absolutely, in the AHL right now, it's good to. I, I, I there was so much hype when we signed him. Oh well, it was amazing that we even signed him. That's right. There was so much competition to sign him, but a lot of hype around the kid. And whenever there's that much hype, there's part of you that says, well. I, I hope I hope he can live up to it because there's lots of hype for guys every year and yeah. they don't always live up to it. But so far, so good. It's almost better that he's starting out in the AHL because Definitely. it gives him a chance to experience uh, the, the, se the semi-pro game. Yeah. And the AHL is at a higher level right now than it would be otherwise. Absolutely. So, that's all good. A good this week to J.C. Sherritt of the Eskimos and John Cornish of the Stampeders. Sherritt recorded... 11 tackles in Friday's loss wow. to Calgary, breaking the single-season record of 129. And Cornish broke the 56-year-old Canadian rushing record with 1,457 on the season, surpassing former Eskimo Normie Kwong. A 56-year-old record. That's ridiculous. Uh, J.C. Sherritt's record stood since 1994. So uh, that, that, that's a good way to end the season. I was, I was really happy for Sherritt. I was hoping he'd get the 11. It's only the third time in his two-year career that he's recorded 11 tackles in a game. So good for him and good for Cornish. Um, it's amazing that that record stood for as long as it did. Wow, yeah, that's true. Uh, Cornish, on the other hand, man, the amount of times that guy played the Eskimos this year alone uh, would allow oh, for him God. to get a record. He was unbelievable in those games. Yeah. Um, I hate think he had a couple 180-yard oh, games against the Eskimos. Oh, my God. Like, absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, so let's give a good as well to uh, actually let's give a good to Jim for uh, giving mm -hmm. Jeff the hardest names of the Gabbies. Um, yeah, you got two of them. I, I know I got one coming oh, up too. That's gonna be great. Okay, so let's give a good to noted diver Luis Suarez. See how good that nice. was of Liverpool. I don't even know if that was right. In the lead up to a game last week, the opposing coach had made a big deal about how often Suarez took a tumble on the field. So when he scored. Guy runs past the Everton bench and takes a dive. Classic. I loved it. It was awesome. 
Like he even like put his arms up and his boop. Yeah. The the Everton coach was like, yeah, that was pretty good. I yeah, probably would have done that yeah, too. Good job. So, <laughs> let's I give like a that. bad to a friend of the show, Lance Armstrong, show. who Absolutely. may end up losing another of the major achievements of his career. The IOC says it's now investigating and may end up stripping Armstrong of his bronze medal no. at the 2000 Olympics. That just adds to the rough 2012 that the former American hero is having. He also lost his key to the city from Adelaide in Australia, which is where I think his first race back in 2009 yeah. was there. His last mm -hmm. pro race was there. Mm -hmm. Can't get in anymore, though. Doesn't have a key. Absolutely. Can't first get in. person ever to have his key taken back. <clears throat> Luckily, however, he was honored on this show last week, so that's got to be at least one up. You know, That's, that's going to be a good one. I mean, you lose a bronze and seven Tour de France titles in your key to the city. An Edmonton video blog dresses up as you. That's right. Right? It makes sense. And, 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 and a good looking guy goes <laughs> out to party like three times dressed as <laughs> just you. Just as a. I'm so, saying, that's, that's pretty good. And you can weigh it out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, let's give a bad to fans of Venezuelan soccer team Deportivo Tachira. That's what I'm going with. Sounds a little Japanese, but I'm going to go with it. And it does, yeah. yeah. Who caused the postponement of a game because they stormed the field over the team's breast cancer themed pink jersey. So the fans run so the, the players they come out there wearing the pink jerseys, fans hate it. Usually the team wears yellow and black, and I guess the fans really like those colors. I guess they're aware of breast cancer. I guess already. they're fully aware. They don't need any more they're, awareness. They know all about it. And That's they're just right. like, hey, hey, this is insulting to us that you don't think that, that we, we know, know about totally. breast cancer. Storming the field. <laughs> I <laughs> I don't get that one at all. No, no. Like I, I there's passion. Yes. And there's like you're a lunatic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Then how are there thousands of you? I don't know. Crazy. Crazy? Crazy. Uh, how about a bad this week to the team in the Czech Republic that was fined by the country's hockey federation after some fans shouted racist chants at Flyers winger Wayne Simmons, who is, of course, black. The Chomutov Pirates were nice fined work. the equivalent of about $1,500. Uh, the teams apologized. I think they're very embarrassed by what happened. They say they'll do everything they can to prevent such abuse in the future. But, man, it's amazing that this stuff happens. I'm and just Simmons, it seems to happen to... I was just going to say, I'm disappointed that this isn't the first... Uh, Wayne Simmons racist piece we've had on the yeah. show. That's it was unbelievable. Thing in the preseason last year, that That's was right. that was a disgrace. Absolutely. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, I don't know. Well, hopefully, we can see that stop sooner rather than later. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, the punchline this week is Cleveland, Caval Cleveland Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert, Jim. Yeah. Speaking of pieces we've had on the show yes, before, exactly. uh, <laughs> Gilbert uh, was speaking in what I can only assume was a verbal version of Comic Sans MS <laughs> when he said nice. this week that he wishes he could take back his guarantee that his Cavs would win an NBA title before LeBron James who, of course, won one last season. He says uh, it just wasn't the most brilliant thing he's ever done in his life, adding that if he could do it all again, he would have handled the whole LeBron James thing differently. You think, man? No, Seriously, no bro? Really? You made yourself look like a dummy oh. right away by sending out your Comic Sans MS hate letter. Totally. And then to guarantee, well, I remember seeing that and being like, oh, my God, blogs for days. Yeah. Blogs for days. <laughs> We're set. Yeah, oh, uh, just, just gold right in my lap Ugh. but now <laughs> oh, i think i would have done things differently no kidding brutal. yeah i bet man brutal i like not let him go into the summer as a free agent oh no kidding finding a way to put a yeah. team around him that could have won you know like anyways uh well that's uh, our th sorry good times yeah <laughs> good times there we go that's our 15 minutes of fame up for this week, folks. Join us again next week when we get a whole new 15 minutes of fame. In the meantime, I'm Jeffrey Driscoll. And I like interrupting Jeff. <laughs> Have a good week, <laughs> folks. I was good. Again, I couldn't think of anything funny off the top of my head. I just head. thought of that after interrupting you. Was that like, was oh, good. There that we go. Good. <laughs> You're all over it.